there, Shua here with another drawing tutorial. This is actually a request for how to draw a Lego man. So again, I'm going to start uh, with some basic structure of objects um, and would like to say that proportion is a very important aspect uh, to be able to draw something like a Lego man uh, correctly. So this is kind of my starting point and then I'm going to just draw a tall kind of cube like structure for the legs as well. Now Legos have kind of a rounded top to them uh, or a cylinder that sort of fits within that, that kind of shape of the leg and so that cylinder obviously needs to be repeated back in space so that it lands on the front edge and on the back edge and then you can kind of extend uh, the cylinder all the way back in space. So, uh, unique thing too is that Legos have a little bit of a cutout here uh, on the front sort of uh, portion so this rounded part um, of the leg is it's protrudes a little bit and then the foot down here protrudes a little bit and this is where I mean proportions uh, make a big make a big uh, impact. So for instance I put the foot right here but in all actuality on a Lego it's probably closer to something like this proportionally. So I'm constantly as I'm drawing sort of looking at the proportions that I've already laid down and trying to make the other aspects of it believable uh, with regards to that. Um, so uh, hopefully that will help you kind of think through this. Um, now kind of is cool because my seventh graders have been uh, building 3D models of Legos uh, 1 to 12 scale so they're they're over a foot tall um, and we're building them out of cardboard and it's a long process it's not easy but uh, you get the measurements off of the smaller Legos and then you uh, or the actual Legos and then you multiply by 12 and cut the the different shapes out of cardboard and we hot glue them together uh, and here's a picture of that. Now uh, on the Legos they have sort of this uh, interesting kind of rectangular shape that kind of it kind of swallows up this round part so it's got almost like an arched shape to it and then there's just a little bit of space between the top of the the round part of the leg and the flat um, edge where the body will sit on top or the torso will sit on top so you've got this kind of unique little rectangular shape here that's kind of in front and that's what I'm drawing right now really important too to understand that all of your uh, all of your previous lines that you want to keep need to line up just to make sure that these shapes are fitting together correctly and that's something that uh, it doesn't happen just automatically sometimes it takes studying 3D objects to sort of see how they fit together and kind of trying to piece it together it's a little bit easier to force it into place on a piece of paper um, if you ever try to then build what you've drawn you begin to run into all the challenges that that happen in a three-dimensional world that you can kind of uh, you can kind of get away with your mind will sort of fill in the gaps when you're drawing uh, but that's not always uh, a reality uh, when you actually get to trying to build the models you start to run into all the problems um, and it tends to be uh, you know I was trained uh, in product design uh, that tends to be uh, one of the main complaints of engineers and why engineers and product designers have uh, a challenging working relationship is the designers like to create and make these beautiful looking uh, things. They're, they border on artwork and then engineers want the thing to function and say we well, can't put an engine in a car that looks like that and they have to come together and kind of have a meeting of the minds and figure out what sacrifices can be made so that form and function are both uh, satisfied in the process uh, but I always thought that was kind of a cool thing I tend to be more on the creative side but when, and learning how to do product design 
kind of forced me into the engineering aspect of how can this also uh, function. So, all right, I basically, a quick way of doing this, I, I just kind of guesstimated where all the spots were, and I, I think as a result of guessing, I think I may have pushed the chest on this guy forward a little bit, but this would be the cube that it should happen in, and ideally, I would want that, that top plane to sit within that cube, and I think I got myself off a little bit on my lines. And now after going back to the basic structure of objects and drawing the cube first, I think I have a better idea of where uh, this torso uh, should land. So hopefully that helps you. Uh, you see me kind of have to backtrack a little bit and, and rethink my process. Hopefully that helps you. You saw me kind of draw. Uh, I went with a straight line here and I, I that became his chest at first and then actually that's the more straight line like that um, and realized that I had gotten off um, and went back drew the correct through the correct method drew a cube and then kind of carved my trapezoidal shape if that's a word uh, out of that cube um, again I've gotten myself a lot of overhang here that I shouldn't have so um, yeah, maybe I can make his leg a little bit wider and get away with that I'm not sure we'll see all right, so an arm's going to come out there, and somewhere around in there is the other ellipse. I don't have to worry about it too much because this arm, for the most part, will be hidden. Um, now, one of the hardest parts of creating the 3D Lego is the arm, for sure, because they just have this weird uh, geometry to them, to say the least. Like, the front and the back is just, of the like, the elbow is weird it's up high the forearm comes down like I don't know it's just kind of the weirdest <laughs> thing and even how we solve the problem in the 3d world is not the proper solution but I think when you know when when you're trying to get something done sometimes you make a little bit of sacrifices to to get the project done uh, rather than try to make it perfect so uh, in this situation it is technically a, a, a cylinder um, for the arm around where the elbow bend is um, and then it opens up where the hand will come out um, so this is kinda like an ellipse here um, and you, you, you can see part of it just because of the angle of the way the arm bends um, and then out of this little guy is an opening for the wrist and then the um, the classic Lego hand uh, for gripping all the wonderful uh, things that they can grip and it's got kind of a again this is like a cylinder here on top and I'm getting pretty dark with my line weight now because I'm running out of tone I've, I've gone I've pushed it about as dark as I can get it but hopefully you can kind of make that out that there's the hand uh, right there it's about as close as I'm going to be able to get today um, on that and then you've got the other arm that comes out you could always draw like a guideline from here to sort of see where that ellipse is going to happen you could draw these guys out here and kind of figure out where this hand is going to be and that'll do for now then in the center of this if you're not sure where the center of an object is in space you can always draw an X uh, from corner to corner and that gives you the midpoint both in this direction and in this direction so I got a pretty good idea that that's where this the center of my ellipse will be um, for the neck and of course that's going to be a cylinder there's not much to the neck uh, it's not a huge tall cylinder but then you've got the head so what I might do is I might draw a vertical line here this is kind of the axis that's going up and down through there now my cylinders need to kind of center around that that I'll draw a little bit of a roundness to the to this actually it's straight up and down here and then it will be round right in there round right in there So, there you have it, how to draw a Lego man using basic structure of objects. Again, this has been Shua. I'm the creator of The Legend of Hairpan. If you already picked up your copy, thank you so much. If you haven't, you can grab one on Comixology. And I believe starting today, it's only 99 cents. Uh